head. So this is a kind of a mask. It's not made from Cape Parrot feathers, but it's it's here to celebrate Cape, the Cape Parrot. It's full of colour and full of life, which expresses the Cape Parrot's uh, nature. The Cape Parrot is an endangered bird. It's endemic to South Africa, and there are only 1,600 birds left in the wild. 600 of which occur in the Amatola region, which is where we are right now. The Cape Parrot is highly sociable. They're full of character. They they. They would fly around in, in flocks and gather at night to discuss the, the day's events. And my colleague says that they have the brain capacity of a three-year-old human. So they're very highly developed birds and completely worth protecting and ensuring their continued survival. So they rely on Afro-Montane Indigenous Forest, which is the forest that we are currently restoring. We're at Wolfover Site 1 and this is one of the sites that DAF, the Department of Environmental, the Department of Forestry and Fisheries, has given us responsibility for restoring. We've, we've got a currently 56 hectares that we are going to be restoring over the next five years. And Wolf River 1 was given high priority because there was evidence of extensive illegal harvesting that was occurring in this forest. And we were wanting to, to start working here, developing a good relationship with the community, um, partly to restore the area we've been given, but also to start addressing this illegal harvesting of, of the yellowwoods and white stinkwoods and assegai and knobwood, all these really important trees. No, uh, here in Kipara project, we are here for many things. First of all, we are approaching this space called Kipara project, Kipara. Yeah, now we are planting the trees so that they can protect, they, we can draw the, make the forest bigger so that they can uh, have a space to live. Yeah, so something is important about these trees. We want them, we want these trees to give them the food, even the pets on the forest. We want them, these trees when they grow up, we want them to give them some, some food to eat and give us another seedlings so that I can carry on planting other trees. I think it's over to Ricardo. And I just found out today that there's the possibility of Disney funding this project and future work with the project in the way of ongoing series with the community here in the influential to Lord of the Rings town. And there's much speculation about whether it's true or not, but the author of Lord of the Rings, is it J.R. Tolkien? Mm -hmm. His son lived in Hogsback and did lots of work around this area and sent his father drawings of the forests and the waterfalls. And that was the time that he was coming up with the ideas for the book. So wherever, he, wherever the author was living, he was getting ideas from many different places, especially from what his son was drawing. So it's one of the influences to Lord of the Rings, and there is some significance to that. Disney, Walt Disney, would be very impressed with Hogsback, as I am with Walt Disney's creations. And I am making similar work to Walt Disney in Hogsback and I'm happy to have found it finally and I'm hoping that Disney can support the Cape Parrot project and work with Disney connected to that as much as it can. Thank you. And I hope it's still recording and thank you Disney for watching this. And we are at a very nice river and we are with many dogs helping us and we hope you like hogs back thank you i just want to add to what ricardo was saying 
So the three dogs you see here, Rain, Cedar and Yoshi, they live in Hogsback and I think they have one of the best dog lives you can have. Um, they're living in, in a landscape in an environment full of magic, full of abundance of life. The water flows the, cascading down mountains. We have so many waterfalls here. We have thick indigenous forest and, a, and an extraordinary mountain landscape. So it's, it's this place of enchantment and wonder and mystery that really embodies the power of storytelling. And the work that we're doing here at, as the Cape Parrot Project, we believe strongly in healing the link or healing the relationship between people and the natural world. So there's a village close by called Zingnuka Village and we are working with them to restore this forest. And there has been illegal harvesting that has been happening in this forest and we're wanting to work with the communities to start really deepening ecological values. And one way we felt we could really do this is to, to use the power of story, the power of, of photos and the power of moving um, imagery and music to really begin to cultivate a, a deep sense of connection and, and also knowledge about the, the natural world that surrounds these local people. So just touching on what Ricardo said, we want to develop series working with the children in this area um, linked to the Cape Parrot and forests and the rest of their natural environment. Okay, over and out. Over and out. Look into it immediately. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Cassie Carstens. I'm the research manager for the Cape Parrot Project based here in Hogsback. The project has been going since 2009 and we study the distribution, the behavior, the ecology of the Cape Parrot here in the Amatola region of the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Currently we're in the process of inspecting all of the nest boxes that was placed in the Hogsback area. These boxes were installed in order to provide an additional source or additional position of nesting for Cape Parrots in Hogsback. Unfortunately we haven't found an active one yet but we continue looking each season to see if they possibly have used them or are currently using them. First hand perspective of the dancing flying, and swearing and struggling and screaming. Ha 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 ha!